Um, given everything that Meg laid out with regard to Omicron, we've got these antivirals that are, uh, you know, approved now. You've got some studies uh, across the globe indicating that Omicron is perhaps less uh, severe than other variants. You know, would you describe that as a sentiment shift with regard to how the market uh, is treating the pandemic today? Two things I would say. Number one is that the market is taking, you know, each successive wave of COVID and actually having less and less impact on the market. And frankly, it's having less and less impact on the behavior of individuals, you know, whether it's going to retail stores or, or, or going out and actually um, having recreational activity. And so um, as you know, unless we have a very different type of variant, uh, what we're seeing is they're just simply not having the level of market interaction. And so as we look to next year, it's going to be a focus on earnings. It's going to be a focus on companies' ability to be resilient and use technology. It really is going to become a market much more focused on actual results than it is on the virus. I was actually just speaking with a source uh, yesterday who uh, is in kind of the equity capital markets world, and he was saying that investors are gearing up to focus on fundamentals, cyclicals, things like that. However, as a value investor, I feel like people have been waiting for their day for the last decade to come where value is once again uh, in focus for a long time. Do you believe that 2022 is the year uh, for value investors? Uh, not necessarily. I think that there are fundamental shifts that happen to have, you know, happen to be necessary for clients' portfolios now. Much greater focus on larger cap stocks, much greater focus on dividend shares, much better, greater focus on certain industries like healthcare that you've been talking a lot about, um, and more profitable technology companies, all of which I think are going to profit as, as this recovery um, matures. We're 22 months into really, you know, um, into this cycle. And we're coming rapidly to what I would describe as a mid-cycle, a mature cycle of an economic recovery, even though it doesn't feel like that because of COVID. So clients, I think, need to be much more focused, or investors need to be much more focused on what's in their portfolio. In terms of value stocks specifically, only those that actually are going to benefit through grow above average growth and above average earnings really have a shot here. It will not just simply be a market revaluation. And, uh, and I think people have to be just much more selective in their portfolio construction. Speaking of portfolio construction, David, what what happens to the classic 60-40 um, uh, portfolio mix in 22 if, in fact, we get some multiple compression on uh, equities and, and bonds continue to sell off in the face of a, a more hawkish Fed? You have, I think, hit upon the question. You know, when we talk about Citi's outlook for 2022, our number one focus is on two things. Number one, clients have way too much cash. They all think that they can be opportunistic and, and market time. And they simply can't do that. There's no suggestion that they can. But the second thing is they can't really count on bonds. They do offer diversification, but they don't offer any real return. We think that there's going to be a negative return for most of the you know, uh, short and medium duration bonds in their portfolio this coming year. And so they have to look at dividend substitution. Companies whose earnings are going up, whose dividends are growing up, who may be doing buybacks, and who therefore have the much higher probability of generating a real positive rate of return. And so we're going to tilt portfolios to equities, especially those kind of equities. More than, you know, 10 percent of all of our recommendations fall into that one bucket. And if you are out there thinking about you know, your fixed income portfolio, there really is no reason why you want to add to it today. We expect earnings to grow up 8 percent of each of the next two years. And if that's the case, it is certainly better to earn to own uh, you know, what I would call conservative equities rather than fixed income in this environment.